Over the next several videos, we'll be taking a look at a couple different CSS frameworks. This video will give you an overview of the topic. So first, what is a CSS framework exactly? Well, there's no hard definition, but generally a CSS framework is a collection of code, usually written directly in CSS, that helps you style your websites more quickly. Typically, you will use bits and pieces of CSS framework to build up your styling, but then you can also put in your own styling on top of that. So getting a bit more specific, let's take a look at the parts of a typical CSS framework. So usually the main part of a CSS framework is some type of grid system, which you can see here at the top. By using a grid system, you can more quickly and confidently lay out a web page. Grid systems give you finer aesthetic control and allow you to give a page lots of strong visual structure. Grids are also great because they help you avoid lots of customized layout code that can be difficult to change later. Now, if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, don't worry. We'll be talking more about grids in upcoming videos. Now, besides a grid system, almost every CSS framework includes some type of reset code. Many browsers, both past and present, oftentimes will include lots of default styling. Some elements might have padding and margin, the fonts might be scaled strangely, and so on. The reset CSS included with most frameworks will, just as the word implies, reset all of the default styles that browsers apply. That way, when you build up your website in one browser, you can have more confidence when doing cross-browser testing because the reset code essentially levels the playing field. The thing to note here is that while this helps cross-browser testing, Reset CSS will not fix browser bugs that you might encounter. You still need to perform cross-browser testing to track down any styling bugs. Now, beyond grids and reset code, it gets a bit more variable. However, lots of frameworks will include typography code. This will help you lay out type and scale fonts appropriately. If you're not familiar with the principles of typography, this framework feature can be particularly useful because oftentimes the typographic defaults of a CSS framework are indeed very good. Next, frameworks will sometimes include some type of form styling. This basically just allows you to style forms and form elements more effectively. This is very important in web applications where you have lots of forms because it's essential that all of your forms have a consistent look and feel. CSS frameworks will also sometimes include print styles. Using print style sheets, you can style the way your web page looks when it's printed. Although it might seem like people don't print web pages very often, it's actually quite common. People print confirmation pages, boarding passes, and concert tickets every day. So this is a very good framework feature to have. And finally, many frameworks feature a plugin architecture of some sort that allows you to use pre-built widgets like buttons, tabs, and more. So now that you have an idea of what comprises a CSS framework, let's take a very quick look at a few frameworks and other tools that you can use to write CSS faster. We'll be going over all of these frameworks in more detail in upcoming videos. So the first one we're going to take a look at is called SAS. SAS, which is spelled S-A-S-S, -S, is an acronym that stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. And although we're including SAS in this chapter, it's not actually a CSS framework at all. We'll learn why in the next video. You can check out SAS at sas-lang.com. So next up is Compass. And after we explore SAS, we'll take a look at Compass. Compass is a framework that's built on top of SAS. But before we can learn about Compass, we do need to get familiar with SAS first. You can check out Compass at compass-style.org. After that, we'll get a bit more traditional. Blueprint is a very popular CSS framework and is basically the textbook example of what a typical CSS framework looks like. If you're new to CSS frameworks, you'll definitely want to check out Blueprint at blueprintcss.org. Finally, we'll check out the 960 grid system. 
960 is similar to Blueprint in that it's more traditional, but it's still a very robust CSS framework. You can check out 960 at 960.gs. If you're new to CSS frameworks, you should now have a better idea of what to expect. In the next video, we'll be diving right into some advanced material with SAS.